Beverly Hills Hotel, a pink and green fairy tale castle overlooking the manicured lawns and multi-million dollar homes in its kingdom, Beverly Hills. And we've got a corner table today in its polo lounge with the anchor of the Daily News Magazine show Extra, Maureen O'Boyle, and Giselle Fernandez, the former CBS anchor who headed west for her most recent stint on Access Hollywood. And Maureen O'Boyle and Giselle Fernandez, <laughs> here we are in the Polo Ah, uh, so cool. And you got kind of lucky, line. right? <laughs> so great. <laughs> let's, what, let's see, what do we have to eat? What did you, what did you well, want? Well, I'm right? having crab cakes. I think this is a remoulade with yellow tomatoes, basil, or spinach. Yes, yeah, yeah, spinach. Of some and spinach. Giselle, Delicious. That's, a, that's a tuna. Is it pepper Sashimi tuna? Sashimi tuna, no, with sesame seed, blackened sesame seeds, mm. with some exotic mushrooms, cucumber, and a little bit of the wasabi, too. Ooh. I feel like a spice. piece of white bread here. I have a shrimp cocktail. <laughs> but I love a good shrimp cocktail every now and then. It's a beautiful one. Yeah, they look good. Well, let's, let's dig in. I, mm. I'm hungry. Oh, yeah. this is delicious. Big day today, right? Did, we did the shows. Yes, we both We're did happy with our work today. Mm. I'm very pleased. At the, at the end of the day, it's just nice to have a good meal. Have you have any... Especially when somebody else cooks it. It's really <laughs> it's, nice. Somebody no else dishes. pays for exactly. it, too. <laughs> what, um, do you have any Beverly Hills Hotel or Polo Lounge stories? This place is such a storied location. Oh, it really is. You know what? It's so funny that you should even ask that. When I first moved from New York to Los Angeles, this was the one place I wanted to come, the big pink hotel, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. because of the incredible stories, the history of Marilyn Monroe and Howard Hughes and all of the People great who, grand And they're still Hollywood. doing it. It's still coming. And here. the scandals, too. And the scandals. <laughs> right. But I we remember could create coming. one tonight. <laughs> I think oh. we are. Oh, Bill, <laughs> Keep your darling. hands off from in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I actually went down to the pool. They have the bungalows, which are right. very um, famous. Oh. And there was this guy with sunglasses, my, like literally my second day here, sunglasses, the coiffed hair, I mean, looked so Hollywood. I was thinking, this is outright. He was lying by the pool with a martini in his hand. I mean, it looked perfect. Mm -hmm. Walked up just to, just to walk by. George Hamilton. No. In the sun. In the sun. Doesn't he sunbathe here, though? Isn't this like a, a legend in Hollywood that this is where he hangs out? It I don't was, know if he still yes. does. Right out of a movie. It was right oh. out of a movie. Yeah, and that's one of your first days. How about you, Maureen? I was here having drinks here in the lounge with somebody years ago and walked out, and there was this beautiful presence. I mean, the physique on this guy was just incredible. And he towered over the entire lobby in this gorgeous, I, I would say, cream-colored silk Armani mm. raw silk summer weight suit. And I just, I was looking at it, going, "This is the tallest person with the most perfect physique." And he turned around, and it was Michael Jordan. And I almost passed out. Was it Michael I Jordan? I was like, "Oh, oh my!" Because he, he's just he, his he's presence got is tremendous incredible. Tremendous physical charisma. Oh, just, and he's got an amazing body. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can. I got the presence. He's got a body. I can equal that. I'm a 25, 26 year old kid, right? Uh huh. Out here doing a Last pilot. Year. Yeah, it's a couple <laughs> years ago. Out here doing a pilot, and I was right. I actually had was waiting for my car at valet, and I'm standing in the front waiting. I look over, and I see this towering figure, just like you. And I look, oh my God, it's John Wayne. No. So, I, like a thousand other people, I said, "Hello, Mr. Wayne." I introduced myself. What are you doing out here, kid? And I said, no. literally, I said, "Well, I'm making a pilot for NBC." Well, give it your best shot. Then he got wow. in his car and drove Whoa. away. Wow. True wow. grit. It's the truth. You That's know what? Amazing. That happens. I've, I've been in New York for 10 years and just moved out here recently to do extra. And I'm amazed at how many times I turn around. Everywhere I turn around, I see a celebrity. Like, I'm jumping up and down going, oh, my God, you won't believe who I saw at the grocery store. And people are like, that happens all the time. But, but you, Marino you know, Boyle and Giselle Fernandez, Fernandez also, also meet and interview celebrities professionally. <laughs> so I wondered who really impressed them. But Tom Cruise totally blew me away. Have you met him? No. This guy. Well, walks I mean, I've into seen him at, at the Cannes Film Festival, but I've never met him. Well, first of all, he's shorter, mm -hmm. and uh, than you'd imagine on screen. This the screen is makes true. Him seem so much of larger. many movie stars, yes. they're many. much shorter than you think. Yeah. That man has the inner light of God within him. He comes in, and there is a megawatt billion bulb in him that shines, and he comes up and he shakes your hand, and, and he, you feel it. You feel it, and he's got more grace and charisma. Um, Lauren Bacall had it, I you know, Command, imagine uh, sitting across from this large, handsome is a great word for her, handsome, husky, voiced woman, oh, and I've, she I've, says... She's got a voice deeper than all three of ours put I together. Know, yeah. I know. Magnificent. I, she was lovely. Yeah. She just, it's a charisma. It's a presence. It's, it's something they, I think, it's despite them. See, I fell in love with, I fell in love with Jim Carrey. I couldn't believe it. I was doing one of the junkets for one Jeez. of his movies, 
and he walked in, and I was one of these people that looked at him in movies and thought, oh, he's so, he's so kind of goofy, and, you know, he kind of does this spaz kind of thing. But in person. Oh, he's stunning. He's absolutely gorgeous. He had this beautiful haircut. His hair is thick and beautiful, and he had this short haircut, and his physical presence, and he's just as sweet and nice. Th and the same thing with Tom Hanks. I was amazed no, no, no. Nice at time. how gorgeous and sweet, and when I say gorgeous, I don't just mean physically. I mean inside and out, an down, aura. An aura to, around yeah, the down to tell. earth, and just an intimacy instantly that is just because they know mm. that the only way to make it really, and I think ultimately, is sort of stripping away what Hollywood has created over the years, which is this sort of like manufactured image. Let, so let's, let's flip it back. You, you both of you really, to use a classic sense, earned your stripes as reporters, mm -hmm. as journalists, overnight what newscasts. What happened to us? Morning <laughs> newscasts. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get we there. We had to pay the bills, darling. <laughs> you went Hollywood, and we're in Hollywood. But be, be Sold our soul to the devil. <laughs> well, not really. Just kidding. Edit that out. <laughs> um, we get a, no, in a way, maybe you did, but did I don't know. Did you sell yours? I just gave mine away. Here's what I want to know. Of all the jobs you've ever had in the business, what was the toughest job you ever had? And I'll tell you mine. What was the oh. worst job you ever had on the way up? Absolutely know what that was. What was that? Um, I went to work at 3 o'clock in the morning um, for a station in Macon, Georgia, <laughs> I and I wrote and produced, well, co-wrote and co-produced. Don't want to, my, my co-anchor would die if I said that I did it mm -hmm. alone, but we did it together. <laughs> an hour-long newscast, and I would go out and shoot the weather shots, and if there was a fire, if there was any sort of major accident, between 3 and 6 a.m., I'd go out and shoot it, and then I'd finish up that show, and then I would go do the news breaks, and then I would go out and become like a photographer slash reporter. Now it's so getting late shoot, in the day now. Yeah, sure. I would shoot for somebody, and then they would shoot for me, and I would be at work sometimes till 6 o'clock in the evening. So I'd that, been there the How about you, for toughest 16 job. hours. Well, it's so funny. I look back, and those were my best days. I started oh, off I also as a photographer. It, yeah. I mean, we, you start off in the business as a news person doing everything, yeah. right? right. Um, I think the toughest job was when I finally got to network news as a national and foreign correspondent, just having to like learn through a baptism of fire, if you will. Maureen and Giselle forget. see their evolution from hard news to entertainment as part of an emerging trend on television. Television has changed. We're kind of now, I think, really creating what it's going to be in this next millennium. And part of that is nothing is just totally cold and objective. We're human beings. We're not anchors up there. And when I was in the business, I think we were both growing up in the business, anchors were supposed to know everything. We're supposed to be knowledgeable in every subject. So there's an element of fraud. And now we're more real. We're saying, OK, you know what? We may not know everything, but we will tap into the experts that do. And we're human beings. And we feel the, the either the travesty or the joy that we're reporting to you. And as human beings, we want to know that this is not just a statistic or a fact. It's something that's happening to real people in real lives. Who? I think I, I think what Katie Couric has proven to all the people out there is that what she has brought to television as a journalist, as a host, a woman, as, as a an anchor, being. as a human yeah. being, yeah. is that she is a person behind mm -hmm. that anchor well desk. And and I and I think that we all all of us applaud her and appreciate that because she's allowed sort of this imperfection in all of us because no one is perfect. And the years that we sat behind the local anchor desk and we were all cheerful and Back to you, Bob. You know, I mean, you can't be that way anymore. Right. What do you think about the approach that Geraldo has been taking with regard to President Clinton, where he is actually literally trying to save the president? I think Geraldo has not only gone over the line in his, um, what he calls journalism, I think he has far exceeded it, and I think it's a travesty. You know, if, it, if you're, if you're going to have a show and have it be your own show, then you can do what you want. When you call yourself a real journalist and go back into that vein, and you take a side and you try and you know promote one political party uh, over another, then you've crossed the line. And I think he's done so in, a, in an abusive way. And I tell you this, Geraldo, because I was say, you got to you're going to get a phone call. Pull the Geraldo. reins back, baby. Pull the reins back. You got a little too big for your britches. What doesn't know is Geraldo is <laughs> waiting in the wings. Uh, come on out, Geraldo. Now, when we return, more from the Polo Lounge with Marino Boy and Giselle Fernandez, plus some star-studded facts about the Beverly Hills Hotel. Here's a Beverly Hills Hotel fact. The actress Raquel Welsh was discovered sunbathing in one of these lounge chairs right by the pool. Obviously, I can understand why. And Katherine Hepburn once jumped into the pool fully dressed after playing tennis. At 4 o'clock every afternoon, they serve you fresh sorbet. Now, how about that? Hmm. What is it, mango today? It is.
We're at a corner table with newswomen Giselle Fernandez and Marino Boyle at the historic Polo Lounge in the Beverly Hills Hotel. And just as it is today, the hotel has always been a magnet for celebrities like Marlena Dietrich, Jean Harlow, and Gregory Peck. The hotel's premier restaurant was named the Polo Lounge because celebrity polo players like Will Rogers and Spencer Tracy played on the field surrounding the hotel. And during our visit, we learned about the hotel's infamous bungalows and their secrets. You know, Elizabeth Taylor spent her honeymoon in a bungalow like this with husband number one and number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six. And then there's Howard Hughes. But here's a fact. The famed recluse Howard Hughes used to live here, and he was so concerned about not being seen that he had his waiter leave his food in a tree so he could come out and get it later. And now our much less reclusive guests. And we are back at the Polo Lounge with Marino mm. Boyle, Giselle Fernandez, and <laughs> food. What do we have? Mm. Well, I got a goat cheese salad with what looks like beautiful grilled baby fennel and yellow tomatoes, croutons, and some sort of a mushroom. I don't know which, what kind. It looks, it looks like fabulous like, cheese, too. It looks good. Mm. I got a grilled, delicious-looking salmon with a bellini with divine mixture of various caviar and white and green asparagus. And, and I ordered what is called the McCarthy salad. I thought they invented the Cobb salad at the Beverly Hills Hotel, but I'm told they didn't. This is the closest thing I could come. This is a uh, chicken, egg whites, cheese, tomatoes, bacon, and beets, and it's all mixed with this delightful you know Vin I have to have a taste of vinegar. You will get that as much as you want, my divine. dear. Divine. So forks up. Okay. Thank you. And bon let's appetit. talk a little bit about Cheers. food because, Maureen, you are, by your own description, a <laughs> oh, woodsy yeah. girl. Oh, a woodsy girl. You're a yes. woodsy girl. You have mm. your own log cabin and wild Cute, turkeys really? uh -huh. around it. Where? In upstate New York. It's about, it's almost 100 years, well, it'll be 100 years old soon. With a big garden? Uh, it's on 16 acres, got a big garden, have friends up there. I'm landscaped uh, with my friend Bob Pelletier, probably about, oh God, maybe six acres of the property. And my friend oh, Charlie fabulous. helps me do the garden. So what do you cook up? What do you grow and what do you cook? Um, well, we grow all kinds of vegetables, fingerling, potatoes, to corn, to... Um, Beets to garlic to horseradish, uh, beans, just, I mean, everything. How about you, Giselle? What, what, what are your, you're a, I mentioned before, a kosher burrito. Your, yes. your father is Mexican, your mother is Jewish, so what about your food background? Well, we were always big eaters in my family, and not and, only and big eaters, but... holds true today. Yeah, absolutely, and we also love very mm. much um, spicy foods and exotic foods. Mm -hmm. Certainly from my Jewish background and my Mexican background, you can put all those spices together and it's divine. I love, in fact, I've gotten really into making paella. I love making um, fresh salsas from um, poblano chilies and the tomatillos. I love making salsas fresh. You've spent lots of time, both of you, in New York. Which uh -huh. I've been living in New York for a long time. And you've been out in L.A. for enough time to really absorb L.A. What's the difference between the way that people go out and have a good time in New York and Los Angeles and Europe? Mm. Oh. Well, people, I think, are much more outdoorsy here. Hiking is a regular thing. I don't think people eat out here the way they do, though, back in New York. I mean, what we mean? were not shy about food. There mm -hmm. wasn't like, oh, how much fat grams? I never heard that in New York. <laughs> I never did. We just ate great food and had, you know, seven-hour dinners that would a start. Bag of lamb for two. Exactly. That Thank would you. start at six o'clock yeah. at night and go till two o'clock in the morning. People well, are really you, health conscious. What here. do you see here in Los Angeles? The body uh, culture. The oh, car I mean, I culture, really. The body culture. I mean. Right. The food here is great. There's some absolutely incredible restaurants, but I think people's imaginations are sort of um, lacking in the sense of what to order because they're so busy worrying about how many fat grams. Um, I just don't eat that way. I like to eat what I like, and I've never had to worry about my weight, at least not terribly. I mean, uh, like everybody, I have to worry about it, but I mean, I, no. still, I mean, I still concern myself. Let's with gang it. up on her. No, you know, to we'll me, I'm like, dessert. I want that chocolate yep. mousse, but you have the alternative chocolate. And that's the one great thing about California and the rest of Oh, everything here, is alternative. They have this. the zone I, menu. I want the mousse, but the non fat mousse. I have to, I've always battled my weight, but really? I love the fact Oh, I yeah. don't believe that. Oh, I have, but no, I've gotten very active out here. Uh, just one quick yep. I love the fact that you asked that question, what's the big difference? You say you love to cook for your friends. People on the West Coast go to each other's houses, and you cook and entertain in your home. And you so them. much more than on the East Coast. Everything's restaurant-oriented. Oh, really? oh, yeah. I, I see. So. Well, I lived in upstate New York so on the weekend, so that's what we in. were always but in, doing. But in, in, the, in the New York, in asking the question, in New York City versus Yeah, people Los don't Angeles. have big apartments, so they don't have room. Right. Right. Here no. you have so much room, you the just can't believe it. The space that we're in in New York 
would be a prime would be a alcove. dining room. Oh, this, <laughs> is, this is a dining room. This is a dining room, a formal dining room in New York six, City. You pay $600, $700 more a month for this much <laughs> space in, in New York, for but sure. But it's much easier to eavesdrop on the table next door in New York than it is here. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I've got a question for you, too. Yeah. I, I thought, what can I ask to really give them one? And here it is. Which would you two rather have? Be as honest as possible. Okay. The ultimate career, uh -huh. whether it is you become the next Oprah Winfrey, you're the next Dan Rather, or the ultimate personal relationship, which would just be total fulfillment with another person. Absolutely the latter. You would much rather have 100%. ultimate... 100%. My career has been something that I'm doing, not in search of a husband or in search of the perfect relationship with a man, but it is something that I'm doing because it's 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 like what you do. It's you know to pay the bills. You have a career. Oh, it's and fulfilling. It's fulfilling. fulfilling sure. But I, having watched my parents have this mad love affair for 48 years, wow. I, I that's what I want in life. I think we're living in a new day. I don't think you have to choose one over the other. Yeah, I think but you I'm may asking have you to. to. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. You, but you, you know to? what? I don't want to choose. I want I want it all. You know, I want to be able to have a fulfilling personal life and then be able to balance it. I think that's the real challenge mm -hmm. today is finding a balance. I mean, you have to ask yourself, the question is, you know, you know, I'm a driven human being. I love to work. I think we're yeah. each blessed and with a gift of a potential. And we want to fulfill that potential. And you want to use your gifts. And you yeah. want to also fulfill the, you know, the soulful qualities of sharing your life with another human being. So to what extent do you balance work and love? That is the real challenge. To me, it's not the question of, you know, which is more important to me, because both are very important to me. And I want both. We're three single people, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. the, thing that, the thing that I find And I'm is, okay with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine, <laughs> see, too. I would, I, I'm fine with it, but believe me, if somebody knocked, walked in here right now, I'd be like, see ya, bye. What are you waiting well, for? You haven't met Sven, the pool attendant here at the Beverly Hills Hotel yet. You know, I've he, heard about him. I've heard a lot about him. I've heard a lot about Sven. What's the idea? But what I was going to say know. was... Harrison hmm. Ford <laughs> is... Harrison Ford... I just love everything about him. The man is married, Maureen. <laughs> I mean, know, but Harrison insane. Ford is married. I, I appreciate him. your telling us about it. No, but him. a Harrison Ford, like that kind of guy. All right, and you, for you, I can't Giselle? Have him. A guy who likes to eat is a big deal for me. I like him to really like his food. I like him to like consumption on all levels consumption. of life. And for you, my friend, what is the ideal yeah. woman? Big brains, really mm -hmm. important. Really important to be with us. Why are you laughing? Nothing. Big brains. I just Big thought the brains. <laughs> uh, and someone who loves dessert. Do you like dessert? I love dessert. Do you like dessert? dessert? See, we're, we're, we're getting there quickly. I like dessert too. <laughs> and welcome back to the Beverly Hills Hotel, where we have a corner table with newswomen Marino Boyle and Giselle Fernandez in the Polo Lounge. And I've got the Bavarian cream mousse with California grapes. Mm. Mm. I've got an apple tart with this incredible green dome and made of sugar. Cinnamon ice cream in there. What do you have, mm -hmm. Maureen? What's that in your little I left hand there? I have sorbet with this most delicious chocolate funnel stuffed with, um, I think, blackberries, boysenberries, mm, and delicious. raspberries. Mm. Who would you like to have a say, three or four dinner guests? Oh, God. Longfellow. Mm. I'd want uh, to eat. You couldn't eat. You'd be listening to him the whole time. Sitting Bull. Um, Lincoln. Oh, great. Longfellow, Lincoln, Sitting Bull. I'd have um, Oriana Falacci, who is my favorite journalist and favorite Great Italian author. Right? And just a, a tremendous voice of the century. I'd have her. And I, she's a great revolutionary writer. And I'd have uh, Beryl Markham, who is my hero. She wrote West with the Night, was one of the first women aviators and mm -hmm. lived in uh -huh. East Africa at the turn of the century. I definitely have her there. She was a transformative woman and always inspired me. The 10 years of our lives have gone by, and we're doing another Bill Box Corner table, and you still look as beautiful as ever. Right? We're Thanks here. to those natural techniques, no, not, those na not, the, not that credit card. <laughs> all that what, exercise and good eating. <laughs> what do you want to be able to say about the 10 years of your life that's gone by? Oh gosh, I want to be say I want to say that I'm getting ready to celebrate my child's like seventh birthday. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. How about you, Giselle? That you didn't live one day without taking advantage of it, and that you really lived in your truth, and that you were exactly who you're supposed to be, and that you kind of fell in love with who you were and enjoyed it. Now, you know, I will literally, I don't say this, I, don't, I will drink to that. That <laughs> is a, a truly beautiful thought, and actually, I like to end each show with our guests making a toast to our corner table viewers. So we oh. give you the first shot as making a toast to them and then Maureen and we'll close things out. So mm. a toast. How lovely. A, um, 
a toast to all who join us um, in this lovely meal with this lovely setting that you all fulfill your every dream and desire and that you are exactly who you are and meant to be and that you embrace yourself. I think living in your truth is the only thing we can ever aspire to. Yeah, and you cheers. Will. That's nice. Um, I guess I would say to everybody out there watching, if you have family, uh, to me, food means love. So I think everybody, I hope they all sit down with some friends and have a good meal and share some togetherness. Marino Boyle, thank you. Cheers. Giselle Fernandez, thank you very much. You've been wonderful. What a pleasure. I've you know been something? Thank you. This is the best date I've had in a long time. <laughs> two, two chicks, right? <laughs> two in more. the polo lounge, have the juicy feet.